Welcome to Make That Keto, a new series on this channel where we challenge each other to recreate our favorite dishes from before we started our ketogenic weight loss journey. So I used to work in downtown Chicago and I would have access to some amazing food and shopping after work. One of the places I would go all the time is a world famous bakery called Magnolia and they would have cupcakes and cookies. But the thing I was always craving was their famous banana pudding. Their banana pudding just had this burst of banana flavor and it was like a custardy velvety goodness and it was absorbed into those vanilla wafers that they had on the bottom. Oh my God, it was so delicious. So I decided to challenge Emily and see if she could recreate this famous banana pudding and make it keto friendly. So in my opinion, the thing that makes Magnolia Bakery's banana pudding so great is that they just don't use regular vanilla pudding. They add condensed milk in it. And so I had to look up a recipe for condensed milk that was keto friendly. And this is what I found from All Day I Dream About Food. We will leave a link to the original recipe in the description. All Day I Dream About Food is an amazing site with tons of keto recipes. So I'm gonna tell you what's in the recipe for the full ingredients and instructions. Make sure to visit her website, okay? So we are going to be using heavy whipping cream, butter, xanthan gum, and I like to mix that with a little bit of allulose just to make sure it distributes evenly. Evenly. And then more allulose. In the recipe, she actually uses um, Swerve and uh, Boca Sweet, which is I think an allulose product, but we're gonna be using about a half to two thirds cup of allulose, okay? So let's start making the condensed milk. So I put our heavy whipping cream into a saucepan and I'm going to bring that to a boil and then reduce that to a simmer for 30 minutes because that's what's going to condense it into condensed milk. After that, we're gonna be adding in our other ingredients. And so we should probably start on the next step which is going to be starting our pudding. So I found this recipe at myketokitchen.com and we'll link the original recipe below. The recipe actually calls for erythritol, but we are using allulose because that's our preferred sweetener. You know, if you really wanted to save time, you could probably use the sugar-free vanilla pudding. I mean, some people say it raises their blood sugar or whatever, but um, if you're in a time crunch and you're kind of dirty like us sometimes and you just want to eat it, and guess what? It's better than eating the original that has like 500 carbs in it, then go for it. I mean, this is about making this sustainable over the long haul. You know, just because Sarah Sarah and I, we make these recipes that are all crazy. It doesn't mean that we're eating like this all the time. Sarah and I actually eat very plainly so that we can make these recipes for you guys. During the week, we will usually eat something very like, I don't like to use the word clean, but we typically will eat something like steak and spinach, steak and broccoli, something like that, so that we can treat ourselves to these like extravagant meals. You can't eat like this all the time on keto because calories still count and a lot of these things are higher on the carb scale, but why not treat yourself once in a while? That's what this channel is about. It's about experimenting with things that are new or weird or just trying to make this more of a sustainable lifestyle for people so they don't feel like it's so restrictive. Good is better than perfect. I don't think that's the same. Better is better than perfect, no. My point is is that if something like this keeps you on keto for the long term, then eat this instead and feel good that you're making a step in the right direction. Am I right? I've been struggling with my weight for the last 20 years and most of the time when I was trying keto, I did end up losing weight, but honestly, I felt like the diet was so restrictive because I wanted to optimize how much I was losing and how fast I was doing it. And if I wasn't perfect, then I honestly would just go order Domino's or go eat something like this because if I can't make it perfect, then it's not even worth it because I've already ruined it. And that was the mentality that it's taken a long time for me to change. This is better than the real thing. Thank you for attending my TED talk and back to regularly scheduled programming. So this was brought to a boil and it's now simmering for the next 30 minutes. In this pan, we're gonna be making our pudding. So we have our heavy whipping cream in this pan and we're going to be cooking it for five minutes. We actually added a whole Tahitian vanilla bean inside there. We scraped out the insides and then we put it in there and we actually just threw the bean in there as well. So that's been cooking for five minutes and now we turn off the heat. We're putting it aside to let it cool down because the next step is, is we're gonna be dealing with our eggs. So the reason why you have to wait until it cools down is because um, that's hot and these are egg yolks. And so if you put them in when they're hot, then you're gonna have scrambled eggs in your pudding and no one wants that, right? I have like three, three and a half tablespoons of allulose in here. I'm gonna fish out the vanilla bean. You can see all the vanilla specks in there. It's kind of, it's cooling off for sure. Okay. Okay, meanwhile, remember, we also have our condensed milk still cooking. <laughs> Please, I don't wanna make scrambled eggs, okay? We're gonna slowly add the cream mixture with the vanilla into this egg yolk mixture and hope that we don't create scrambled eggs. Okay, so we have our tempered egg yolks. 
They look great. There's no scrambled eggs in there. We're gonna put it back into the saucepan and we're gonna cook it on low heat. And the egg yolks are going to act as a thickener. So using a spatula, you're going to be bringing this up low, letting it thicken, scraping down the sides, and uh, just keep on doing that until it thickens up. So this has been thickening for about 30 minutes. We're gonna be adding two tablespoons of butter, our allulose. We're gonna let that combine and whisk it together. So I have here a fourth teaspoon of xanthan gum and mixed with a little bit of more allulose and I'm gonna mix that in now. It's not thickening. Um, it's not exactly thickening yet. I'm kind of getting concerned. I've never made this before. <laughs> so the next step is to put the pudding into a bowl over ice so that you can get it nice and thick again and cool it down. I don't know, Sarah's kind of installed doubt in me a little bit. I did taste it and I thought it didn't taste sweet at all, but I guess the sweetened condensed milk is actually gonna have the sweetener in it, so. No time like the present uh, to put our banana flavoring. We're using this banana nut flavoring from one-on-one -on -one flavorings. It says here our serving size is 20 drops. Sarah disagrees. Um, she says that's way too strong, but I'm just gonna go with 20 drops of serving. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna mix this in here. I'm gonna put in five more drops because I'm feeling bold. Let me try. We're gonna go with 10 more drops. What's the drop total? 26 plus 10, 36 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put it in the freezer because uh, I don't wanna wait two hours, so I wanna wait less than that. So it's been a while and I'm getting impatient. I want to eat this thing. So um, we're gonna check on it. Oh, it looks thick for sure. Look at that. Okay, okay. Let's take it out. I'm gonna be honest. I wasn't feeling too good about this scenario. Sarah, what do you think? Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, so the next step is going to be mixing our condensed milk into our pudding. And this is gonna be really important because that's gonna give it like that soup velvety texture and sweetness because remember allulose is not as strong as some of the other sweeteners out there. It's only 70% as sweet as normal sugar. So we're gonna be adding in and folding in the condensed milk until I like the sweetness of it and then Sarah does too. So let's start. I'm gonna go in with about half first. So I'm gonna try it right now for sweetness and for flavor. I might be adding some more of the banana extract in there, so. It's definitely thickened up. It's sweet. It's banana-y. I don't know if we need to go past this. Sarah, I want you to try it. Well, I wanna try the finished products. Okay, we're gonna have to talk about these cookies now. Not sponsored, but high key, we love your products if you ever wanna sponsor us for a video. These are the wafer cookies. Seven cookies is one net carb. I mean, you can't beat it. And they're absolutely delicious. I have been munching on them occasionally since I bought this bag because there were three bags in that pack and now there's two. So we're gonna be layering these cookies in with this. We're gonna stick it in the fridge again so that it all like combines, I don't know, like absorbs. And then we're gonna give it a try. So since Sarah's the one that challenged me to this, I want to get her opinion of the way it looks, of the way it smells, of the way it, it's vibe. So Sarah, what are your first impressions of my creation? I'm surprised at how yellow it looks, even though it has no banana in it. It's got egg yolk in it. That's what's making it yellow. <laughs> mm. I tried the pudding element before Emily mixed in the condensed milk and I was kind of like, that's not sweet at all. I didn't realize that that was gonna be adding the sweetness in there. So I was kind of like, this is probably not gonna work out. And I'm gonna have to fail you. But um, after you added in the condensed milk, you seemed impressed. So maybe I should take a bite. You try first, okay. since you're the one that has to be impressed. Okay, so I'm gonna have a little bit of the whip. 
We've been using allulose in our recipes a lot because we like the sweetness of it. It doesn't have the same cooling effect that erythritol does too. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, are you passing me? Yes, I'm gonna be passing you. And I'm gonna give you an A. Really? The cookies in there are like absorbing and becoming soft and filled with that banana flavor. And it really adds like a nice element. It's kind of like that short bready, vanilla-y cookie that you wanna break into, you know? Oh my God, it's really good. I love high key products, they're just amazing. We do have a coupon code for high key, site wide, you can use the link below and then type in the Keto Twins to get 10% off your order. Mm. So we hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, we think it was a success and Emily's actually gonna pick up the next thing that I will be making in the next episode of our Make That Keto series. You spill it? <laughs> and if you enjoyed our video, please like it. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm and makes sure our videos are pushed to other people. And if you want to continue watching content from us, you can click on one of the videos on the screen and we'll see you over there. Anyway, I'm Sarah. And I'm Emily. And, and we, we are, are the Keto, Keto Twins, twins signing out. out.